A very good morning, my dear students of class 8. Today in biology, we are taking the last portion of reproduction in humans. This is the second part of this chapter. The topics which we are going to cover today are sexual reproduction in animals. In the previous video, we studied about the asexual reproduction in animals. So under this, we will be studying human reproductive system, male and female, fertilization, implantation, growth and birth. So let us start with sexual reproduction in animals. Most animals they reproduce sexually. So here you should know what is the difference between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction we have to have two parents male and female and they produce special types of reproductive cells. Male they produce male gamete. We also call it sperm. Okay. So this is the sperm. Here you can see this is the head of the sperm. This is the tail. In between head and tail you have the middle piece and the neck. And the female they produce female gamete which is also called egg cell or ovum. So here you can see so here you can see the nucleus here also you have got the nucleus okay now when sperm fuses with ovum fertilization occurs now when the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the ovum when they combine it is called fertilization and this gives rise to a zygote one cell is formed after the fertilization that is called zygote now this zygote grows by the cell division so repeatedly it divides and then changes itself into an embryo and this embryo finally it grows and becomes a new individual so in short this is the sexual reproduction male and female are required they produce male gamete and female gamete which are also called sperm and egg cell or ova once they fertilize once they combine it is called fertilization and then a cell is produced which is called zygote now here the cells repeatedly they divide and they become embryo and this embryo turns into fetus and a baby and becomes a new individual so now let us learn the human reproductive reproductive system we, we are starting with the female so female reproductive system the eggs are produced this female gamete eggs are produced in the ovaries the ovaries are two whitish oval bodies now here you can see this is the female reproductive system here you can see this oval structures these are a pair of ovaries so here you can see these are the ovaries and the function of these ovaries is to produce the eggs lying within the lower half of the abdomen one on the either side of the uterus this is the uterus so on both the sides of uterus you will find the ovaries a pair of ovaries and their function is to produce eggs only one egg is produced by an ovary alternatively so this is the egg which is produced every month a pair of narrow muscular long duct extend from each ovary to the upper part of uterus now here you see as i told you this is the ovary and here this is the tube muscular tube so there are two tubes okay emerging from the ovaries and going towards the uterus so these are called the oviducts or fallopian tube so here you can see this is the one oviduct or fallopian tube which connects ovary to the uterus the mouth of these oviducts are expanded to form a funnel shaped structure it is through this that the egg enters when it is released by the ovary so as we know here only the eggs are produced so once the egg is released through this only this fallopian tube or oviduct 
it is carried towards the uterus okay this is the way okay now this uterus it's a hollow structure just like inverted pear shaped muscular organ it is found between pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and rectum the embryo grows and develops in the uterus so here fertilization takes place and that you will be studying and inside this ovary here the embryo develops and turns into a fetus after several cell divisions now this uterus so one side it is connected to the a pair of fallopian tubes now other side inside if you see it opens to the outside through a long muscular tube called the vagina so this is called the vagina situated between rectum and urethra you know what is rectum and urethra rectum is a place just above the anus and urethra is the one through which the urine passes okay now this vagina this is the place which receives the male penis during the copulation and also serves as the birth canal so now here the function of this vagina is to receive the sperms or the male gametes here during the time of sexual intercourse okay so the first function is it receives the sperms and also one more function is there that is it also serves as a birth canal that means through this only the baby was here in this uterus it was being developed for nine months and then once it is mature it comes out through this way only so two purpose are there for the vagina first is to receive the male gametes or the sperms uh, during the intercourse and then once the baby is mature enough it comes to the world through this vagina only now since we have finished female reproductive system now male reproductive system so look at this diagram this is of male reproductive system now the sperms are produced in the testis so here this yellow portion you can see this is testis so we have got a pair of testis it lies a pair of testis lie outside the abdominal cavity in a sac called scrotum so first you see where the testis is so this is the testis there are two one pair it is outside it is not inside the abdomen it is outside the abdominal cavity i'll tell you the reason but see where they are located they are located here in the scrotum so this is the scrotum inside this there are two testes which produce the male gametes or the sperms now why they are outside why they are not inside because the production of sperms and their development requires less temperature than the body temperature since it is outside it is 2 to 3 degree lower than the body temperature and this is the most suitable temperature range for the sperm production and development sperms can be produced and develop during um, in the temperature which is 2 to 3 degree lower than the body temperature okay so they can survive here otherwise they'll be they'll die the testes consist of a mass of sperm producing tubes so here you can see the dark yellow place is there so this is the place we call it epididymis here you have got highly coiled ducts which produce the sperms these tubes joins to form ducts leading to highly coiled epididymis now you can see the location of epididymis this is the one above the testis here found in the upper side of the testis this in turn lead to a muscular sperm duct do you remember we talked about the oviduct or the fallopian tube in the female reproductive system now here in the male reproductive system we have got sperm
sperm duct and the function is the same as the previous one there the function was to carry the eggs or the female gametes here the function of the sperm duct is to carry the sperms so it is here sperm duct the yellow muscular tube which you see this is the sperm duct okay so the sperms are produced here and then they move in this they are carried the two sperm ducts are there why two because we have got two testes one from each testis and it opens in the urethra this is called urethra the dark maroon colored tube is called the urethra so ultimately it joins the urethra but before that here two three glands are there which also joins this the seminal vesicles are the pair of lobulated glands each opening into the corresponding sperm duct so here you got, you have got the seminal vesicle this one so this also joins in the sperm duct and what it does just before it meets the urethra it joins and the seminal vesicle they produce a secretion which serves as a medium for the transportation of sperms so sperms also require a medium so that they can swim in it it is if this is a mixture where the sperms are there we call it semen okay it is a milky fluid then some more secretions are added to the sperm here you can see this is the sperm already we have seen and by the way with the help of its tail it moves at the base of urinary bladder encircling the urethra is the prostate gland so here you'll find the prostate gland okay this is the one now just like the seminal vesicle prostate gland also it pours alkaline secretion to the semen so now in the semen the secretion for seminal vesicle is there okay which acts as a medium now prostate gland also pours an alkaline secretion as it passes through the urethra now copper glands copper glands are here okay so they also secrete and then it serves as a lubricant now the urethra passes through the penis and carries either urine or semen so now this urethra is the common passage for both of urine also and the semen also semen has got the sperms now when we are talking about now here first let us see the uh, prostate gland this is the one which provides alkaline secretion then we have got the corpus gland okay corpus gland which secretes something which is which acts as a lubricant now let us talk about the semen it's a mixture of sperm and secretions from these three seminal vesicles prostate gland and corpus gland it's a milky white fluid now look at this diagram then you will understand it better so now from here from the testes through the epididymis here through this muscular tube which is called the sperm duct now sperms are there okay now secretion from seminal vesicle on the way okay here which acts as a medium then the next one alkaline secretion is produced by prostate gland and the last one is corpus gland this also secretes something which acts as a lubricant so your semen is a mixture of sperm secretion from the seminal vesicle which is milky white alkaline secretion from the prostate glands and the lubricant from the cowper's glands so together all we can call it a semen it's a mixture of all this it's a milky white fluid 
its average amount is 2 to 3 ml in a single ejaculation ejaculation means when it comes out it's 2 to 3 ml in that you will not believe that there are 2 to 4 crores of sperms are there millions of sperms are there in only 2 to 3 ml of semen now this semen goes to the vagina now comes fertilization during the copulation or the sexual intercourse the sperm present in the semen are released in the vagina so i told you there are two functions of vagina the one the first one is to receive the sperms so which is there in the semen from where they actively swim with the help of their tail they swim upwards okay now millions are produced i told you so here you can see through this way the sperms they go up now since millions are there some of them they die on the way only only a few are able to reach to the upper portion of the fallopian tube or the oviduct the rest only a few of them are able to reach there on the upper parts of the oviducts the rest die on the way and are absorbed if there happens to be an egg now here i told you this is the ovary so every one every month one egg is released from here so this is the egg which is released now here we have got the sperms a few of the sperms which survived only one of these can combine or fuse with this egg it gets fertilized by just one single sperm during this fusion the tail of the sperm is left behind and only the head part which contains the nucleus penetrates into the egg now this is the egg here i told you only a few sperms have reached one of it the head portion it penetrates and goes inside and the tail left is left behind now the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the ovum that means male and female gametes nucleus they combine fertilization takes place and here you can see the fusing nuclei is there and this cell is called zygote so zygote is formed fertilization has taken place in this picture also you can see one egg is there but there are many sperms ultimately one is able to fuse this the nucleus of the sperm fuses with the nucleus of, of egg and this act of fusion is called fertilization so someone ask you what is fertilization this is the one the nucleus of the sperm fuses with the nucleus of the egg this act of fusion is known as fertilization after this there is one more important process that is called implantation that means fixing of the embryo now the fertilized egg which we also call the zygote it soon starts developing how it develops by cell division by the time it reaches the uterus a small ball of numerous cell is already formed now look at the diagram to understand this this is the ovary one egg is produced and here on the upper part of this oviduct or the fallopian tube here the sperms are there okay in this diagram it is clear so here the sperms are there one ultimately fuses with the nucleus of the egg now fertilization takes place and zygote is produced so this is the zygote fertilization zygote is produced now it undergoes the cell division now one cell divides into two two divides into four four divides into eight and sixteen and like that it travels towards the uterus its final destination now by the time it reaches the inner uh, portion of the uterus it becomes a small ball of numerous cells because the cell division has taken place the embryo forms a pit in the wall of the uterus and gets fixed in it so here you can see the ultimately the embryo is fixed inside the wall of the uterus 
so here it is fixed by eighth day or ninth day okay and this process is called implantation when the embryo fixes itself in the inner wall of the uterus so suppose if it comes in the exam what is implantation so this is your answer the natural way of fixing of embryo in the wall of the uterus is called implantation and from here only the pregnancy starts okay now growth what is a growth it's an irreversible change increase in size and weight irreversible you cannot go back to the previous okay now here we have seen that a single cell was there in the beginning which we call fertilized egg or zygote it divides and redivides and forms a cluster of cell division is accompanied by another process which is called specialization of cell now what happens here is not only the cells are dividing but they are being specialized they are changing their shape they are given the functions various functions and this specialization of cells is also called differentiation now slowly and slowly cells they form the tissues the various tissues they form various organs organs ultimately they uh make organ system so what happens in the beginning which was a zygote a single cell it develops and grows and develops into an embryo and then embryo soon develops into a baby fetus so here you can see from first week to uh, 38th week how the changes takes place how it grows by the repeated cell division by the end of 5 weeks of pregnancy that means slightly uh, it's almost 1 month the embryo is quite advanced stage during this period the heart and the circulatory system are formed in the beginning this is the heart and the circulatory system they are formed because the fetus has to get the blood supply okay and our heart starts 7 months before a birth after 2 months you will see the hands and legs also start forming so this is the fetal growth from 8th to 40th weeks okay how the fetus grows and becomes a baby now the birth the full term of the development of an embryo in the uterus is called gestation so we also call it gestation period and that lasts in the humans for 280 days that is almost 9 months at the time of birth the baby is pushed out with the head oozing out first by powerful contraction of the muscles of the uterus now once the baby is mature now here you can see what is gestation the full term of development of an embryo in the uterus is called gestation so once it completed its terms that is 100 220 days almost 9 months now the baby is mature enough to come to the world and lead an individual life then there are contractions in the walls of uterus muscles of uterus and by this contraction the baby is pushed to the vagina and Th this is the one inside the the fetus is there inside the uterus so usually the head comes first and the baby comes to the world so this was all about sexual reproduction in human beings with this we have come to the end of this chapter hope you have understood it very well stay home stay safe and have a good day